It's time now for members' statements. The member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. As a teacher, it was my privilege to educate, mentor, and support children, and now it's my responsibility to defend their education and advocate for their right to be supported in their schools. An up-to-date and necessary sexual health and health curriculum should be taught. Speaker, this government has rashly decreed that come September, students will no longer be taught an up-to-date health and physical education curriculum. They've decided that LGBTQ families, consent, and gender identity do not have a place in our schools. I staunchly believe that children deserve to be informed and protected and given the words and the tools to navigate a very different world, both online and offline. I've been working with those who are fighting human trafficking. I have learned from our frontline HT officers and from social workers and trauma experts who are trying to combat this scourge as well as support victims and survivors. And now, here we are defending teaching kids about consent. Consent is protection from many harms, including something as extreme as human trafficking. What is consent? Online, we give consent to apps and strangers. We let our phones geotag us so we are findable. We allow apps to listen and record without our knowledge. Unknowingly, we give permission every day. Our children must understand how to live safely online. Teaching kids about consent is a protective factor in all things. This isn't just about sex. We should teach our young children about personal space, about using their words to say, please don't be in my personal bubble. We should be reinforcing that you don't have to hug people you don't want to, that surprises can be good, but secrets aren't always safe, and that every child should know the words to be able to talk about their bodies and about hurt and abuse. This province has invested resources Thank and you. energy into fighting human trafficking. You'd think they'd make the connection to education. Thank you very much. <laughs> member statements. The member for Oakville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased today to rise uh, in the House and recognize a very committed member of the Oakville community. On Friday, I had the honour of presenting a certificate of congratulations on behalf of the government, recognizing Praveen Lata Sharma for her receipt of the Sovereign's Medal for Volunteers by the Governor-General of Canada. Ms. Sharma is a dedicated volunteer with the Interfaith Council of Halton, the Oakville Hospital Foundation since 2003, among other community organizations. Her various roles at the hospital include being a patient visitor, convener, and most recently working one-on-one -on -one with the patients who are at risk of cognitive and functional decline. In addition to her personal support of patients, her leadership as a member of the Oakville Hospital Foundation's Development Committee helped oversee a $46,000 grant from the Lions Club International Foundation, as well as an additional $46,000 in donations from the community. Together, these funded a new ophthalmology ultrasound unit for the Oakville Hospital. Volunteers provide a crucial level of support to communities across Ontario, efforts which often go unrecognized. It has been said that volunteers are unpaid not because they are worthless, but because they are priceless. Provin's selfless dedication to her community has had such a profound impact on the citizens of Oakville. I am very glad that she is part of our community, and I wanted to recognize her here today in the chamber. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member Statements. Member for Nickel Bell. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise to remind the Premier of the promise he made to Ontarians. The Dog Ford government will find efficiencies without cutting any jobs, he said. He stated, no one will lose their job due to PC cuts. He made that promise on May 7, on the election's first leaders' debate, on May 27, during the last leader debate, and he made that same statement at most campaign stop during the spring election campaign. Well, I would like to hold him to, that pro to those promises. Health Sciences North in Sudbury is the regional hospital. It provides cares for all of the patients in the Northeast. This is the hospital my constituents depend on in their times of need. The hospital is cutting 113 positions to meet their budget constraint for 2018 and 19. Our health care workers are stressed to the health, not sure if they are the next in line to lose their job. Those cuts are hurting families. Those are family-sustaining jobs being cut. Citizens in Sudbury and Nickel Belt need your help, Premier. This is a continuation of the death by a thousand cuts that the Liberal government brought to our province's hospital. Mr. Ford said and repeated, they will find efficiencies without cutting any job. When he said that, did that apply only to Southern Ontario? Because in Northern Ontario, things are going from bad to worse. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. Oh. 
this, uh, this weekend as people enjoy what's known as uh, Simcoe Day uh, in the city of Toronto. Anyway, it's important to pay tribute to Ontario's first lieutenant governor. John Gray Simcoe was born February 25, 1752 in England. He's also a member of British Parliament and fought George Washington's army. At age 24, Simcoe went to war to fight the American revolutionaries. His regiment arrived from Britain in June 1775 to take part in the siege of Boston. In October 1777, Simcoe assumed command of the elite Queen's Rangers, largely composed of loyalists and American deserters. It was a 400-man elite fighting force trained in woodcraft, scouting, guerrilla warfare, instead of the protocol of the time of uh, strict and rigid maneuvers. They wore green uniforms as camouflage. Simcoe and his rangers fought alongside Benedict Arnold in the winter of 1779, spared the life of George Washington himself, allowing him to uh, escape. Simcoe was held as a prisoner of war and was paroled by Benjamin Franklin. On September 12, 1791, Simcoe was appointed lieutenant governor, the first lieutenant governor of the newly created Upper Canada, and for those of interest, uh, there is a statue of John Gray Simcoe on the, it would be the southeast grounds of the precinct. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> member statements. The member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's my pleasure to rise today. I am, my name is Chris Glover, and I'm the uh, member of Provincial Parliament for Spadina, Fort York, and I'm still getting used to saying that. Um, I want to thank uh, the, the members, the people and the voters in my riding for in, in, uh, bestowing me with this position. And I also want to thank my family and the volunteers who put in thousands of hours to get me here. Before this position, I was a school board trustee, and I ran for school board trustee in order to protect our public education system from the privatization wave that is hitting, was hitting Ontario in the, under the previous Conservative government and has hit the United States and Britain. Uh, I'm also, as a trustee, I was working very hard on bicycle safety, on employment opportunities for students with disabilities, and on the issue of gun violence. I have been hosting meetings for the last six years on gun violence, and I've done my own academic research on it. And last March, I brought a motion to the Toronto Board of Health to take and ask the Board of Health to take a public health approach to gun violence. And what this means is that we need to deal with the trauma that comes out of gun violence, because every shooting, including the ones that happened yesterday in this city, every shooting leads to trauma. It leads to anger. Uh, anger, PTSD, anxiety, depression, and if we don't deal with that trauma, then we will just feed back into that. That will feed back into the cycle of violence. And I have a lot more to say about gun violence, and I look forward to future opportunities to talk about that. Thank you. La députée d'Orléans. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Member for Orleans, thank you, Mr. Three things uh, with this house. First and foremost, I want to sincerely thank the people of Orleans for trusting me uh, in continuing to work for our great community. We have important projects to work on, and I'm delighted to be their voice for the next four years. There are a number of great projects uh, that uh, we're working on, and I'm very proud to represent my. I hosted my fifth Strawberry Social, Senior Strawberry Social event to celebrate our senior community and their families. Ce fut un grand succès. This was a great success where 150 people were, um, came to this event and uh, took advantage of this event during the summer. It was a very warm day and they had the opportunity also to taste local strawberries and also to highlight the importance of the month to celebrate the month for seniors. I would like to invite, actually, the community of Orléans uh, to join me and my team on our fifth annual community corn roast and barbecue that will take place at Petrie Island, one of Orléans' jewel, on Thursday, August 16, from 5 till 8 p.m. I cannot wait to see you all. Merci. And again, à la communauté d'Orléans, merci de votre Thank you very much, and thank you once again for trusting me. The member for Niagara West. Thank you, Speaker. This past weekend, the beautiful 
town of Pelham celebrated once again their Pelham Summerfest, an annual tradition dearly beloved by local families who flock to the closed-off streets of downtown Pelham and Font Hill. Recognized as an Ontario Top 100 Festival, almost 50,000 people come out to celebrate this event every year, enjoying local headliners, delicious Niagara cuisine and beverages, and the talented arts and crafts on full display. This past weekend, we welcomed a very special surprise visitor to Niagara when Premier Ford himself came down to experience the Pelham Summerfest. The Premier was warmly welcomed, and many families and individuals came over to take photos with the Premier, thanking him for the relief his plan for the people is bringing them. We had the opportunity also to thank local firefighters and first responders, as well as the volunteer organizers of this important local event, for their commitment to the community. We were joined by Niagara Chair Al Kaslin and the Mayor of Pelham, Dave Augustine. The fact that the Premier came down to Niagara again shows this government's commitment to rural and small-town Ontario, and I'm proud to be part of a party that recognizes the rich heritage and culture across this wonderful province we call home. Thank you to all the organizers and volunteers who made this amazing event so successful, and I invite all members and their families to come out next year to enjoy the Pelham Summerfest for themselves. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, today I rise to speak about a matter that's pertinent in light of what happened last night in Toronto Danforth. It concerns the rights and well beings of Ontario's first responders. As we've heard in news reports from last night and as we've seen in previous tragedies like it, the first responders rush to the scene with little thought for their own physical and mental health. Crisis workers, paramedics, police, and firefighters, they do such selfless acts all the time. But, Mr. Speaker, after the media coverage ends, as it will, as it has in these tragedies that have happened in the past, first responders are left to deal with injuries that happen in the line of duty. Visible injuries are easier to treat. Mental health injuries are a lot more complicated, and we are not doing enough right now in Ontario to help first responders who fall prey to serious mental illness. And that leads me to the story of Norm Traversy, speaker, of whose story I know you're familiar with. A firefighter who previously served in Mississauga, Norm now lives in Ottawa Centre, and he suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder that he contracted in the line of duty. To date, the Workers' Safety and Insurance Board has denied Norm's claim for benefits coverage given his PTSD, which has been documented by several medical professionals. Meanwhile, the WSIB sits on an accumulated surplus speaker of over $35 billion, and it rewards its executives with massive salaries. Speaker, according to the 2017 Sunshine List, nine WSIB executives earn over $300,000 a year. I'm making the assumption in this House that we all value first responders, Speaker, but it's time for us in this sitting of the legislature to stand up for their mental health needs. Thank you. <laughs> member Statements, the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's with a heavy heart that I rise today in the House. Like many, I am shocked and saddened by the tragic, horrific, and senseless shooting on the Danforth last night. Danforth is one of Toronto's most vibrant and diverse communities, and it happens to be North America's largest Greek neighbourhood. The families and people dining at Christina's and Dimitri's last night and the pedestrians walking along Logan Avenue were doing what any of us would have been doing last night, and that's why it hits so close to home. Epictetus, a famous Greek philosopher, once said, it is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. And so, Mr. Speaker, in the face of last night's horrific action, I wish to react to this senseless act of violence by taking some time to celebrate this beautiful and vibrant community that holds a special place in all of our hearts. I'd like to take a few moments to share a few quick memories. My best friend, Marie Constantinou, who now lives in Greece, first introduced me to the Danforth years ago as a university student. She worked at Athens Pastries, and they have the best spanakopita and lukumatis in the area. With her, I learned to eat sushi on Katsu Sushi, which is located on Danforth near Logan, and she introduced me to Messini's, which has the best gyros. And just a few weeks ago, I celebrated with my family at Messini's. Mr. Speaker, I also want to take the time to thank the men and women of Toronto's paramedic services and Toronto firefighters, the nurses, the doctors, and our Toronto police force for everything that they've done. And I wish to remind everyone that in the face of tragedy, we should always 
respond with love, and we should respond by celebrating the diversity of our community. Thank you very much. <laughs> member statements, the member for Milton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to be part of a government that stands up for small businesses, and Milton businesses are excited, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, the downtown Milton BIA hosted a Milton Downtown Classic Car Show that saw over 150 classic, unique, and beautiful cars, Mr. Speaker, where hundreds, and fam hundreds of families came out. They enjoyed good food, entertainment, and walked the street to see many of vibrant businesses along Main Street in Milton, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also had the opportunity to meet with our local chamber president and CEO, Scott McMahon, who uh, who, who is an amazing individual and had a very, very productive meeting with him, Mr. Speaker. The Milton Chamber has been advocating for local businesses since 1888. Uh, there are currently over 700 members, small and medium-sized businesses. There's lots of excitement in Milton knowing there is finally a government in Ontario that will help small businesses create jobs and make life more affordable for all Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, under the previous Liberal government 15 years, small businesses and medium businesses were burdened with red tape, hydro uh, prices sky high, Mr. Speaker, high taxes, uh, and the businesses were being driven out of the provinces. Under the Ontario PC government, businesses across Ontario are excited that Ontario is open for business again and help is here. Not just for businesses, but for all Ontarians, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That concludes the time we have this afternoon for members' statements.